Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, our Lord, our Rock, our Redeemer. Amen. All right, let's, let's try this really, I know Pastor Steiner asked, but how many people actually, with high hands, actually read Noah, you could read it in a uh, kid's Bible, you could have watched it on Veggie Tales, you could have watched, I watched Veggie Tales last night on it, so I count. All right, how many? Good. All right. Um, this sermon series is going to be important that you pay attention and, and that you are reading along with us. Um, that's why we send out your bookmarks. Uh, this next week, I think we got Abraham and Isaac. Uh, and we're going to be asking some hard questions. Um, like today, uh, do before you see. Um, you know, we all have faith. We all believe in God. We all trust in him. But you know, I think there are times in our lives we struggle to step out of saying it and to actually put our comfort into God. You know, how often do we go and we, we step in and we go, man, uh, yeah, God, I know I say I trust you, but you know what? I think it's easier for me to do it myself. And we're going to go through this. And we're going to look at these. We're going to wrestle with some of these questions because we all struggle with it. We all struggle with putting our application. Um, so today, as we look at Noah, um, I want you to open your Bibles. Uh, you can open up your smartphone. Um, whatever you want. I'm on page four. If you're in, I think it'll be on your pew Bible, page four. Okay, you guys all sound asleep. This is not going to work very well if you're not, you know, moving around. Um, Pastor Tyner forgot, we did want to put a plug in real quick. We did this last series, this series. We are encouraging you to use your Bible. Um, this is a Lutheran study Bible. We've got some in our uh, church office. It's got some great notes on the bottom. Uh, I've also had one request for ordering a pew Bible. Uh, I've got a leather bound version of it. Uh, there's a lot of options. Get a good Bible. It's important as we're reading through this. Okay, on page four, we've got Noah. What did Noah do? Good, he built a boat. Thank you, Mark. You are awake. I'm not sure about the rest of you, but my son's at least awake, right? He built an ark, or he built a boat, right? Um, I did want to point out something really interesting. The word for ark, boat, is only used twice um, in the Old Testament. It's used to reference the ark that Noah built, and it's used to reference the basket that Moses was stuck in. That was kind of shy. Because how many, we all know the Ark of the Covenant, right? I thought it was the same word. It's not. Uh, just as a kind of an interesting side note. Um, today, as we look at Noah, I want you to think about this. Do before you see. Noah's willing to risk everything. He's willing to step out of his comfort zone. He's willing to build an ark, a boat. Uh, and it's not something just small. Just on, on the small, uh, conservative side, you're looking at a football and a half long boat. He's willing to build this. And he has not seen one drop of water. He's willing to step out and put his faith in God. Even before he's seen the flood, even before he's seen the rain, even before uh, anything has happened, he's willing to trust God. And that's going to be what we're going to continue to look at as we look through this. Verse 9, it says, and uh, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. 
I like this Noah walked with God. Um, two people in all scripture are given this title that they walked with God. Uh, you get Noah and you get the guy named Enoch. Uh, he comes back a couple generations and Enoch supposedly was this great uh, guy who, who just loved God. And both of these get this title of walking with God. And Noah has, and Noah has three sons, Shem, Ham, and uh, Jephus. And the earth was corrupt in God's sight. And the earth was filled with violence. I got this word corrupt. Um, I didn't write it down, but I want to say this thing pops up about six times just in this little area. Uh, it was a fascinating word. Uh, corrupt. It also, God uses this as the word that he's going to destroy the rest of the earth. Um, let's see if you guys are at least awake enough to get this next joke here. Uh, come on guys, this one's funny. Uh, the Hebrew word is shahat. Okay? Now, in Hebrew, you don't use, you don't use vowels when you write it out in the dictionary. You just translate it by the letters. I want you to see this. Do not say it out loud. Fill in your own consonant, or your own vowel. You can buy a vowel, whichever one you want. I thought that was a little bit funny. Thank you, Pastor Tyner, for laughing at my joke. <laughs> Come on. Oh. It's Shahat. <laughs> That's how you pronounce it. The world has come to Shahat. All right. There we go. At least they're awake now. Oh. Yeah, I mean, the world has just fallen apart. And God saw that the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. And for all the flesh corrupted their ways on the earth. So he's still using this word. Um, God saw. Where's the other part that God saw something? Creation, chapter 1. And God saw that it was good. Now God is seeing that it is shahat, good. See, they can pronounce it right. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end to all flesh. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I destroy them uh, with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. All right, then we're going to skip here to 7, chapter 7 here for a second. But... The world is destroyed. God wants Noah to build a boat. I don't know about you. Noah at this point is like 600 years old. I don't know if I'd want to build a boat, to a football field and a half long. I mean, really, if God came to you and said, go build an ark out, out in your ranch, go on. How many of you really would be, don't raise your hand, but think about it. How many of you really would be willing to go put all your trust and faith into building that? I, I can imagine what the neighbors would be saying. What are you doing? You are destroying my property value. Best is not in the homeowner's manual. Come on, right? Why would you be doing this? This has got to be crazy talk. And yet that's what God tells Noah to go do. Chapter 7, it goes on. And the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark. So he's already built it at this. And all your household and I uh, see uh, that you are righteous before me in this generation. I'm going to take my wife's, we were talking about this last night, she made a comment, I think it's probably true both of us would agree to this, how many of you would want to spend this much time on a boat closed, small, relatively small, with your in-laws, or your parents, or your
your brothers and sisters for that long. It's not just going to be 40 days. Do you know how many days? They're on the boat for over a year. You're going to be in close confinement. How many of you really would want to be on that boat with your in-laws? Okay, I love my in-laws, but I don't really want to be in a small confinement that long with them. Right? And that's what he's doing, right? They're all getting on there, and you're like, man, we got to be in close quarters. Take for yourself. Now, oh, I already, already gave you the punchline, but how many, what did God ask him to put on, bring on? Animals of what? We all think two by two, right? Read this. Read this with me. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of animals that are not clean the male and his mate. So how many of the clean animals is God supposed to take? Which is how many animals? Fourteen. So it's not all two by two. Right? You got fourteen coming. And seven pairs of birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive uh, on the face of the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth, forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. Uh, remember we just did something about forty days, uh, talking with Jonah, right? In forty days Nineveh will be... We need to start offering coffee before service. Let's try this again. Nineveh will be destroyed in how many days? There we go. Yeah. 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. 40 days, the earth is going to be destroyed. Right? Complete wipeout. That 40 keeps popping up, a restart, a regeneration. And here we see it again, 40 days. 40 nights. And God did all that the Lord had commanded. Noah was six or sorry, didn't, Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters came on the earth. It'll take them 40 days of rain, then they will be on that ark for almost a full year before they get off. Noah is found to be trustworthy. Noah is found to do before he's willing to see what God is actually going to do. I don't know about you, but I struggle sometimes with following those kind of things. When I'm faced with issues in front of me and I have to put all my trust in God before I'm, I even see any fruit, I struggle. This is uh, the time of sitting maybe in a doctor's office and you find out you got cancer and the only treatment is chemo. And you're sitting there and going, but the, the chemo could kill me, the cancer could kill me, I don't know what to do, and you got to make a decision. This is the times in our lives, uh, maybe somebody has wronged you a long time ago and it's still building up and you can take a risk to forgive that person and let it go. You don't know really what it's going to do, that hurts, but sometimes we just struggle, right? Because we don't know what's going to happen. Or maybe there's somebody we've wronged and we're not willing to go and ask for forgiveness and we choose to isolate ourselves because we're afraid of what the unknown is. It's in our marriages when we, uh, you know, when, well, 
Let me to break it to you. Marriage is not the easiest thing on earth, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get an amen there, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, uh, we struggle in these, and this is when you take that chance and you go, you know what? I'm willing to uh, love my spouse, care for my spouse, take care of that person more than uh, possibly uh, they could even deserve and, and to see what happens. It's that risk. Uh, it's in uh, jobs, uh, allowing us the self to start a new job, to maybe take a new position, to move forward, uh, and not really knowing and putting ourselves out there. You know, I, I remember when me and Lauren, uh, we were talking about going to St. Louis for seminary. Um, it was not the easiest decision, I'll tell you that. Uh, and I had always wrestled with it, but uh, when it came time to actually making that decision and we started thinking about it, uh, well, I mean, first off for me, I had always been a, a BC student growing up in high school and college, and um, you gotta make A's and B's in, in grad school. It's not like you could just jump up. Um, I've told this to some people. Some people know this. It's open, but uh, I'm dyslexic. I struggle with reading out loud. I struggle with reading. And I know seminary, you read about 300 pages a night. There were some fears. Test taking. Uh, not including would I ever get back to Texas. We were... Um, about 30 minutes from my in-laws in Houston, would I ever make it back? And yet we packed up our entire lives and went off. We did before we saw. It would be four years later before we'd even figure out that we'd be coming back to Texas. I don't know where you are right now. I don't know if you've got an issue that you're having to put some trust. But my guess is in the next, uh, if it's not right now, in the next six months, the next year, there will be something in your life that you're going to have to make a decision. There's going to be something in our, uh, just that comes up in the ordinary, that you're going to have to decide, am I going to be fearful or am I going to step out in faith and let God take charge? Noah had something on his mind. Uh, and I really wish that God would send a nice text message or something and tell me what to do. It saved time. But that's not how it works. Uh, definitely Noah uh, was given some better instructions than maybe you and me. But we all deal with something how do we, what in our lives do we need to risk? What do we need to step out? We do this for prayer. We look at this and say, is it God worthy? And then sometimes we just take a leap of faith knowing that God's going to take it from there. Do before you see. Step out in faith and let God take hold of your life. We each have issues. We each struggle. There are things. But let God be in charge. He protected Noah. He'll protect you. He'll continually work with you and help you. Because God cares. Do before you see. Do by putting your trust and faith in God. And let him see what happens. Amen. Now may the grace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until he comes again. Amen.